Hey there. Um, the title of this video is called Fake It Till You Make It, but that's a bit of a misnomer because I'm not faking anything. I had a commission a couple of years ago now because with the world situation and everything, everything takes longer, doesn't it? Um, for a group of kilts for a family, a couple of a couple of men's kilts and a couple of kilted skirts for the ladies. And I thought straightforward, okay, no problem because I've already developed, I've already determined how to tailor for the female figure. And as we've said elsewhere, men's tailoring parallel and then curve female natural waist is a straight taper or a curved taper to the widest point of the seat. But the curveball came when the ladies announced the length that they want. They actually want almost floor length. Um, let's call them semi-formal kilted skirts. So not having any experience with that, and I told them up front, I says, Let's, uh, this will be a work in progress if need be, because the work isn't done until both parties are satisfied, both the client and I. So the, um, the first customer, no, none of these people, neither of these people live, uh, actually none of the family live in the lower mainland. They're all up country. And it took about three fittings, four fittings for the one lady who was able to come over because it turned out it wasn't as simple as, as it, as, uh, first thought because again as we're learning a new style um we have to invent new processes and everything else so with the length of this thing I've, I've come up with all sorts of new methods and such like that and the it's easy to get exasperated with such like this because if you're counting your labor by the hour you're quickly into the red but you have to remind yourself in a situation like this that this is the sort of job that pays you twice uh, you, you're being paid for the initial commission to make this thing. But as you learn, as you go, as you work back and forth with a customer, you're getting experience and that pays you in the future. So you're getting paid twice here. And it's a good way to, good thing to keep in mind so to, uh, as, as you perhaps get exasperated. Um, so I've just finished pressing the second kilt, both the kilted skirt. Both of these are box pleat rather than knife pleat because I discovered that on a, this is four yards of cloth, length of this one's 40 inches if i do a knife pleat we're going to get a series of sort of saw teeth as it were across the bottom because because of the taper towards the hip so a box pleat minimizes that by knocking the, the angle in half um the i'm gonna let this dry i've just given this the first press on both sides and again it's ungainly my, my table isn't the right size for this so um i'm gonna let this dry and then finish it and then send it up to her and wait for the response because if, if she's immediately happy with it that's fine but in any case i tell them if there's in any time in the future a question common or concern get in touch with me and we sort it out it may well be that some back and forth is yet required on this in terms of the fit and the drape and everything else but again that's that's why we do what we do isn't it one other uh, factor that i've discovered is this is a case because I generally only have two straps, a, a strap and a buckle on each hip. Um, but in this case, a third strap and buckle on the on the lower right hip at the bottom of the fell, I consider necessary to control the greater weight length and also weight of the cloth. So yeah, so there we go. This took four fittings to get right, and she's happy with it. This one. Um, the customer measured herself. She sent me pictures of herself dressed in a shirt and trousers so that I could gauge her physique and her posture and everything else. Um, and now I will finish this and send it up to her. Uh, fingers crossed, it'll all be good. If not, we'll keep going until it's right. Thank you.